हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ गोस्वामी एंड टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू विद द किडनी लेक्चर्स आई विल टीच यू मिनिमल चेंज डिजीज और द लाइपोइड नेफ्रोसिस इन द डिटेल इन आवर टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन सो इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस समथिंग रिगार्डिंग द नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम राइट आई हैव डिस्कस द डेफिनेशन क्लिनिकल प्रेजेंटेशन क्लिनिकल फीचर्स यू नो ट्रीटमेंट्स टाइप्स ऑल द एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम In our previous lecture, we have discussed that there are variety of nephrotic syndrome like that of minimal chain disease, membranous nephropathy, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, etc. Among which today we will discuss about the minimal chain disease. So, if you have not seen my previous lectures of pathogenesis of glomerular injury, nephrotic syndrome, etc., then check the playlist and see that video first so that you can easily understand minimal chain disease. now why it is called as an uh, minimal chain disease why the name minimal chain disease is given because friends in this particular nephrotic syndrome glomerulus is absolutely normal there is a you know on the light microscopy the glomeruli appear absolutely normal there is a no significant finding in the glomerulus that's why the name given is minimal chain disease mcd right in other type of nephrotic syndrome there is a variety of glomerular presentation understand like gbm thickening like that of inflammation etc but here it is totally absent that's why it's a minimal chain disease so you might have question that what will happen in minimal chain disease if glomerulus is normal so friends the main event that leads to nephrotic syndrome development is that and it can be check only by electron microscopy not light microscopy that you know in electron microscopy in minimal chain disease there is a diffuse effacement of visceral epithelial cell or podocyte the second name of the another name of visceral epithelial cell is podocyte so there is a effacement of food process of podocyte effacement means loss there is a loss of food process of podocyte we will see it in the detail in our subsequent slide and always remember that minimal chain disease is a major cause of nephrotic syndrome in the children so if you have asked in the exam that which is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in children then your answer should be minimal chain disease it's common between age group 2 to 6 year right it's common in children particularly of age group 2 to 6 year it is less common in adult it's a relatively benign disorder right and the patient will respond excellent to the steroid if you give the steroid to the nephrotic syndrome patient of minimal chain disease then they will improve dramatically so there will be best response to steroid in such patient all right now what could be the pathogenesis of minimal chain disease so it is hypothesized that this problem arises due to the immune dysfunction and the immune function develop because of production of certain cytokines from the t lymphocyte the t lymphocyte will produce or secrete certain cytokines and that will that will lead to immune dysfunction and that is responsible for the damage to the visceral epithelial cell or podocyte and once the visceral epithelial cell along with food process is damaged the glomerular negative charge is lost in our first lecture we have seen that in our second lecture we have seen that uh, the glomerular basement membrane negative charge the glomerular basement membrane is negatively charged because of certain cr protein like that of negatively charged protein so it will repel the negative substance to pass through the glomerulus right negative substance cannot pass through the glomerulus but once your epithelial cell and gbm is damaged right there will be increase permeability glomerular permeability to the negative substance and so the albumin albumin is a negatively charged substance so it will be lost in the urine and the patient will develop nephrotic syndrome right normally negative substance in the glomerulus negative charge in the glomerulus repel the negatively charged substance but here the glomerular is damaged visceral epithelial cell is damaged and that's why negative charge is lost and so there is albumin urea now see these are the certain features that favor the immunological mechanism you know it is mediated by immune dysfunction uh, so it can be favored by this feature i mean these are the feature that favor the immunological mechanism for the development of mcd so see uh, first one is that it follow the respiratory infection or immunization following these two you can have 
you know immune dysfunction in your body so that's why it could be uh, immunological mechanism the patient will respond excellent to the steroid and immunosuppressive therapy so obviously it is suggesting that it is a immune mediated disorder because once you suppress the immunity the patient will improve and the nephrotic syndrome will go on right so that suggests that uh, you know it's a immunological mechanism the patient respond best to steroid and immunosuppressive therapy uh, this particular nephrotic syndrome is associated with the hodgkin's lymphoma which has uh, you know in which uh, there is a defect in the t cell function so that favor that it's a immunological mechanism and, and this particular disorder associated with allergic disorder as well all right so this was the feature favor the immunological mechanism certain non immunological mechanism also observed in the minimal chain disease nephrotic syndrome if the patient is having mutation in the nephrin or podocin gene then uh, you know they are at the more risk for development of nephrotic syndrome now what is the gross morphology of kidney in the minimal chain disease so grossly the kidney is absolutely normal there could be mild enlargement of kidney otherwise it's absolutely normal because uh, you know uh, in this disorder uh, light microscopy is totally normal the damage is at the electron microscopy level the capsule is uh, also smooth the renal capsule is absolutely smooth and pale to yellow cortex on cut section so kidney is almost uh, near to normal right which are the light microscopic features so as we have discussed the glomerulus is absolutely normal glomeruli is absolutely normal so that's why it is known by the name minimal chain disease right and the interstitium will show only mild edema but uh, it's interesting that in the light microscopy one significant change has been observed that is in the proximal convoluted tubule if you see in the light microscopy then in the proximal convoluted tubule there is a presence of lipid vacuoles and hyaline glassy protein droplets in the cell the tubular epithelial cell contain the lipid vacuoles and the protein droplets that is because of that is because of tubular reabsorption of lipoprotein pass through the damaged glomerulus you know here uh, because of immune dysfunction glomerulus is damaged so because of that lipoprotein will pass through the glomerulus and while it is passing through the glomerulus it can reabsorb in the proximal convoluted tubule and because of reabsorption of that lipoprotein uh, you know lipid vacuoles can develop and that's why the another name of minimal chain disease is lipoid nephrosis all right so this is a schematic diagram showing a uh, lipoid nephrosis see this is the basement membrane right this pink color red color is your gbm right okay this is your endothelial cell right and outside the glomerular basement membrane there is a presence of these cells which is known by the name visceral epithelial cell so these are your podocyte right and you can see that here the podocytes are totally flattened see this is totally flat if you observe the lower surface of podocyte then it is flat normally it is like uh, this right normally there is a presence of food process in the visceral epithelial cell but here the food process is lost right so that is the only significant finding in the electron microscopy is that there is a flattening or loss of food process of the podocyte and because of that nephrotic syndrome develop so in the electron microscopy you will have uniform diffuse effacement of food process in the visceral epithelial cell and cytoplasm vacuolation can be seen right that's why it is known by the name lipoid nephrosis gbm is absolutely normal and if you do the immunofluorescence microscopy friends then there will be no immunoglobulin or complement deposit right there is a no deposit uh in our in our previous lectures of uh, nephritic syndrome we have seen that in rpg and you know in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis immunoglobulin and complements are deposited but here it is not right immunoglobulin complement deposit not seen which are the clinical features of this uh, minimal chain disease so obviously the presentation is of nephrotic syndrome the patient will have all the features of nephrotic syndrome the features of nephrotic syndromes are you know protein urea because of which protein will lost in the urine so because of which patient can have hypoalbuminemia right the blood protein level will decrease 
so, and because of that oncotic pressure will reduce and so the patient can develop edema so if you have not seen my uh, lectures of nephrotic syndrome then see that video first right the patient care will also have hyperlipidemia lipiduria etc in the nephrotic syndrome renal function is uh, very good and the prognosis is excellent usually the minimal chain disease nephrotic syndrome patient doesn't die right the prognosis is excellent so this is all about the minimal chain disease type of nephrotic syndrome hope you have enjoyed this video uh, we will uh, we will be right back uh, with a new video new video of the kidney right we will discuss further regarding the nephrotic syndrome or the other types of nephrotic syndrome thank you very much and see you soon in the next video till then take care and bye, -bye.